This is Donna, and this is the Feldenkrais Podcast. We'll be doing a Feldenkrais Awareness Through Movement lesson. So if you need a pad under your head, you can get that ready. So the Feldenkrais, Feldenkrais San Diego is on Facebook, and you can check that out. It's Feldenkrais San Diego. It's on Facebook. It'll give you videos and other clips and information. If you'd like more information about the Feldenkrais Method, you can go to FeldenkraisSD.com. Uh, FeldenkraisSD.com, that's the website. It's got resources and articles and videos and things like that. And the podcast, you can get to that also. So let's begin on our backs. Notice how you fit on the floor. Spend a few moments just observing the places that make contact with the floor. And as you lie here, to be most comfortable, notice if your knees are bent and your feet are standing or if you lie with your legs long. Get a sense of the parts of your back that make contact as you lie here. And you'll notice some parts sink fully into the floor and other parts stay lifted away from the floor. And we'll notice as we go along in the lesson that that will change and that other parts will come and touch the floor or other parts will lift away from the floor. So get a sense of what we're beginning with how you fit on the floor in the beginning. And please reach your right arm toward the ceiling. And with the elbow straight, reach the right arm a few times. Determine the weight of the arm and how well the arm can reach forward. So with simple, easy movements, just extend the arm forward toward the ceiling a few times, keeping the elbow straight. And you'll notice each time you reach the arm forward that the shoulder lifts. And reach the arm the amount that's comfortable without any strain or any stretching. And now as you reach the right arm forward, take the left arm forward and with the left arm on top of the right arm, cross the forearms so the palms of the hands can face each other. Right, so you have to turn the hands so the palms face each other. Both arms are in the air in front of you. The left arm is crossed on top of the right arm, which means that the Left arm is closer to your face. Turn the palms to face each other and interlace the fingers. So with the arms crossed and the palms facing each other, the fingers are interlaced. And a few times allow the elbows to bend. And as the elbows bend, you'll notice that the hands, the knuckles descend toward your chest. So a few times start with the arms, the elbows straight and then bend both elbows so the knuckles brush against the chest and then straighten the elbows again so the knuckles move toward the ceiling. A few times play with this, it's sort of a pendulum movement. You let the knuckles, the hands descend in an arc toward the chest. So you bend the elbows and the hands fall toward the chest and then you straighten the elbows again. So many times explore allowing the elbows to bend slightly, allowing the knuckles to come toward the chest. And as you do this, keep the interlacing of the fingers very easy so that it's not a, a, a hard grip. See if the interlacing of the fingers can stay soft and the fingers can all stay comfortable. So we're working with the effort in the hands and the arms and the shoulders and the chest, what we do. So at every moment, see about making this easier and more comfortable. And then with the knuckles resting on your chest, go ahead and slide the hands. So the hands slide toward the right shoulder, toward the right, kind of into the armpit and then they slide across toward the left armpit. So slide the hands, they're interlaced, 
the knuckles are against the chest, so just slide them toward the right, toward the left. And just listen to the movement that creates in the forearms and the hands and the wrists at every moment, seeing if the hands can soften, if the fingers can soften, if this can be easier, softer, more comfortable. And a few times, begin to take the knuckles toward the chin and maybe slide the knuckles toward the right cheek. Can you caress the right cheek with your hands, your interlaced hands? Can you caress the left cheek? So slide, move the hands, the interlaced hands toward the face, toward the cheeks, under the chin. Just discover where you can move the hands comfortably. Where can you take the hands around the mouth? Right, this requires beginning to take the hands through that gap. Right, once again, bring the arms toward the ceiling so the elbows are straight. Bend the elbows, feel the knuckles come down toward the chest. And then if you continue taking the arms through that gap, you'll notice that the elbows move toward each other. The elbows come toward each other. And if the elbows move toward each other, you'll be able to bring the knuckles, that two interlaced hands, toward the face, toward the chin, toward the cheeks. And just explore this area. Right? Maybe you can explore around the face, <clears throat> above the head, Whatever you can do with the fingers soft and comfortable, make circles around the mouth or around the face or around the head, around the chin. See where you can take the hand. So you're taking the arms through that gap to the other side. And maybe as you bring the elbows toward each other, you can start to straighten the elbows in this direction. So the arms, the forearms are crossed, the fingers are interlaced, and you begin to straighten the arms here. And then again, bend the elbows, take the hands through the gap, and straighten the arms the other way. So the elbows are straight and the arms are facing the ceiling. So play with that. Take the, bend the elbows, take the arms through the gap and bring them out again, and just notice what that's like. How well do the arms straighten in one direction and when they're through the gap, how well do they straighten that way? Notice that. And take a rest. Rest on your back. Pause, take a break, do nothing. And as you rest on your back, get a sense of the contact with the floor you make now. Get a sense if there are parts of your back touching the floor differently as you lie like this. What do you sense in the two arms, in the two shoulders? What do you observe about the parts of your back that make contact, or your breathing, or something in your face. Bend both knees, stand your feet. This time take your left arm in front of you so take the left arm toward the ceiling and take the right arm on top of that and like this you'll notice that the you can turn the hands so the hands face each other 
and with the hands facing each other, with the wrists or the forearms crossed, interlace the fingers. And with the fingers interlaced, begin that same exploration. Begin to bend the elbows so the knuckles can descend toward the chest. Bend the elbows, feel the hands fall toward the chest. And with the hands resting, brushing against the chest, play with taking the hands a little to the right, a little to the left. Slide the hands along the chest from right to left, from one shoulder or armpit toward the other shoulder or armpit. And just slide the hands from side to side, all the while noticing that the fingers stay easy and free, that there's space between each of the fingers, that you're not gripping or tensing or holding. See if the hands can stay easy. You'll notice that the forearms have to, okay, the two bones in each of your forearms, feel how they have to sort of turn and rotate around, feel what the wrists have to do. It demands a lot of the arms and the hands, but go very gently, very softly, and we're learning how to move parts in relation to other parts, so every part is involved, and it's a more, uh, the work is distributed throughout the system well. So play with that. Take the interlaced hands toward the right, toward the left. And then take the, the interlaced hands a little toward the chin, a little further on, down on the chest, and turn it into a circle. So make circular movements, round circular movements, sliding the knuckles around the chest toward the armpits, toward the chin right toward the sternum, just sliding the hands, noticing how the interlaced hands, how that requires the forearms to turn. Try circling in the other direction. Notice the difference when your left arm is on top. And then take the arms, straighten the arms so the elbows are straight again. And then once again, bend the elbows, let the hands descend toward the chest. Begin to bring the elbows toward each other and maybe you can take the hands through that gap, maybe more toward your face. Maybe you can slide the hands toward the cheeks, around the nose, around the mouth. Just discover where can you take the hands, the interlaced hands, interlaced fingers. Where can you go with, can you caress the cheeks? Can you come toward your ears or around your neck? You can take the hands around the face if you can bring the elbows toward each other. Discover what that's like, what's available, what's possible. Just playfully move the hands in different areas, sliding, moving. And then take the, the knuckles through that gap again, back through the other way, so that the interlaced hands can come through the gap and the elbows can straighten and the arms are long again. And then bend the elbows, take the arms through the gap and maybe out the other side and see how well do the elbows straighten in this direction. Take them through again. So it's like a pendulum, you're taking them through as you take them through the gap, the elbows come toward each other and then the elbows begin, the arms begin to straighten. <coughs> take the hands back through the gap and straighten the elbows and just feel what happens in the shoulders, in the arms. Listen, can you keep the hands soft? You may have to loosen the grip of the fingers so that the fingers are more open, one wrist bends a lot. Take the arms through the gap and out of the gap many times, discover that movement. And then take a rest, leave it alone, rest on your back. And as you rest on your back, get a sense of how you make contact as you lie here.
Get a sense of all the parts that make contact and what's changing. Please take your right arm toward the ceiling. Take the left arm on top of that so that the left wrist or left forearm is crossed in front, closer to your face of the left. Turn the palms toward each other so the hands face each other. You have to turn the hands so that the two palms face each other. Interlace the fingers and notice are the wrists still crossed? You want the wrists still crossed as you have the fingers interlaced. So both arms are straight and, and facing the ceiling. Like this, go ahead and just take both arms, keeping the elbows straight, take the arms to the right, take the arms to the left. And just notice, just listen, see how well do the arms go to the right? How well do the arms go to the left? play with that. You'll notice one direction is easier compared to the other. And you're only exploring the ease of the movement. It's not a stretch. It's not forcing. It's not seeing how far you can go. We're looking for how do you keep the quality where you're breathing evenly and steadily, where your breath is not interrupted, and where your fingers are not gripping or holding, where the fingers are soft and easy. And you can just take the arms right and left simply and comfortably. So explore that many times and see. It might be that you go further in one direction and less far in the other direction. Get a sense of what that's like. And then once again, bring the arms in front of you this time, the two hands are facing each other. The fingers are interlaced. Undo the hands and reinterlace your fingers non-habitually. That means that the other index finger is, is on top. So see if, if you can determine which index finger you start with on top and then switch it so the other index finger is on top. And the interlacing, when you lace the fingers non-habitually, it'll feel a little unusual, a little different. Um, that's when you know you have it and you're doing it. And switch the thumbs, put the other thumb on top. And then go back. Take the arms to the right, take the arms to the left. So when you take the arms to the right, you'll notice that the left shoulder lifts away from the floor. How much does the left shoulder lift? Notice that. And when you take the arms to the left, notice how much of, does the right shoulder lift? You'll feel how the weight shifts, so the weight comes to the right shoulder more, the right side, the right ribs, or the left side, the left ribs. Feel how the weight leans from one side to the other side. And then once again, face the arms toward the ceiling, and let the elbows bend, let the knuckles descend toward the chest, they brush your chest bring the elbows toward each other and begin to take the arms through the gap and come back again so the arms are straight and pointing toward the ceiling bend the elbows let the knuckles descend toward the chest bring both elbows toward each other and take the arms through and back again many times play with that and as you take the arms through that gap, maybe circle around the head or near the chin, see where do you go. And maybe you don't go very far through. It doesn't matter because the intention is to really listen to what we do with the fingers, with the hands, and keeping that, keeping our attention there so we stay easy and free and without efforting. So we're really exploring the quality Right? So it's not doing it or getting there, but staying easy and free, keeping the attention simple and expanded. Take a rest. Rest your arms long. Take a break. And notice how you lie on the floor now.
Is anything changing in the contact as you lie here? Please take the right arm toward the ceiling, cross the left forearm on top of that, interlace the fingers so the palms face each other and the fingers are interlaced and the wrists are still crossed. Go ahead and bend the elbows, bring the knuckles toward the chest, <clears throat> let the knuckles brush against the chest and make circles here. Move the knuckles toward one elbow, I'm sorry, toward one shoulder, toward the other shoulder make larger circles. Take the hands through the gap. Maybe circle around the head with the knuckles. Circle around the nose, around the chin, whatever's available to you. Keeping the hands easy and free. Now take the hands toward the right shoulder, toward the left shoulder. And as you take the hands toward the right shoulder, take the elbows, both elbows toward the left. As you take the hands toward the left shoulder, take both elbows to the right. So your elbows bend, your knuckles are resting against your chest. You take them through further so the elbows come toward each other. And with the elbows toward each other, that means your knuckles are near your face or near your mouth. And like this, so this is a little different than it was last time. You take the knuckles toward the shoulder, toward the right shoulder. As you take the elbows toward the left shoulder, take the knuckles, the hands, the interlaced hands toward the left shoulder. And as you take the elbows, you take the elbows toward the right. All right, so you're taking the elbows opposite the elbows, right? When the knuckles go to the right shoulder, the elbows move toward the left. When the knuckles come toward the left shoulder, the elbows move toward the right. And then again, take the arms through, back up, so they're straightening, the elbows are straightening. Bend the elbows, take them through the gap. Maybe straighten them a little more. Bring them back under. Play with that movement. Play with just moving the arms in different directions, circling them, taking them right and left. Leave that alone. Rest on your back. Undo your hands and notice how does your back settle on the floor now? Is there a difference in the contact you make with the floor? Or the sensation in the hands or the wrists or the forearms? there's something about the way the pelvis lies or a difference you observe in the chest or the abdomen. What's changed in the breath? Notice that. Bend both knees, stand your feet. Please take the left arm in front of you so the left arm faces the ceiling. Cross the right arm on top of that so that the two turn the palms, turn the hands so the palms face each other, interlace the fingers. And like this, bend the elbows, take the knuckles toward the chest. Bring them out again. Let's, let's do it inter... inter um, Let's interlace the fingers non-habitually. So start with the elbows straight. The fingers are interlaced. Take the fingers over one notch. So it's like musical chairs. You just take everything over one notch, put the other thumb on top, and notice that the fingers are interlaced non-habitually. It's not the usual way you do it. Like this, with the non-habitual interlacing of the hands, go ahead now, bend the elbows, bring the knuckles toward the chest, Notice where you can bring the hands. 
And I take them maybe through the gap. Notice what that's like. So the hands, the elbows bend, the hands come toward the chest, slide the hands a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. Now take the hands all the way through so the elbows move toward each other and the hands are by the mouth and they're, they're through the, the gap. And now the elbows are touching each other or toward each other. And like this, through the gap, now take the interlaced hands toward the right shoulder, take the interlaced hands toward the left shoulder. When you take the interlaced hands to the right shoulder, the elbows move to the left. When you take the interlaced hands toward the left shoulder, the elbows move to the right. So just notice how we're involving, engaging the shoulders, the chest, the forearms, all the, the while keep the hands soft and easy. And maybe explore circling the interlaced hands around the head, around the face, all right, sliding one, sliding up one side of the cheek or the other side of the cheek. Exploring all the possibilities. Maybe you can take the hands to the floor on one side or on the floor on the other side. And if you take the hands there, notice where do the elbows go? What happens with the elbows? What do the shoulders do? What does your breath do? Find ways to easily move without interrupting the breathing. And take a break, leave it alone. Notice your contact as you lie here. And resting on your back, bend both knees, stand your feet, take your right arm toward the ceiling, and just reach the arm toward the ceiling and notice, does the shoulder lift more easily? Is the arm lighter? Is there a difference in your ability to reach the right arm, to extend it forward? Do the same thing with the left arm. Extend the left arm forward a few times. So the elbow's straight and just see the ability of the left arm to reach, the movement in the shoulder. Rest the arms on the floor and, and just turn the head a little right and left. Is there a difference in the ability of the head to turn? Notice that as well. Notice your contact with the floor. Is there a difference in the connection with the floor you make? Is there some change in the sensation in the chest or the abdomen, the breathing? When you're ready, please roll to your side, bring yourself to standing, and notice how you stand, how you move. Is there some difference you observe in yourself? Thank you very much.